So you wanted a full vegetable garden tour of self-sufficient me, did you? You've got it. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video I'm going to take you around, like I said, on a tour of our vegetable garden. But I was thinking, why not turn this into a short three-part tour series? This video on the veggie garden walk around, the next one walking around the whole property at all the fruit trees, and then the third, how it all ties in together. The watering system, the fruit trees, the veggies, the chickens, the poultry, and the whole area, what we've got where and why we've got it there. But for now, we're talking veggies only. Let's get into it. I've been extra busy in our vegetable garden because we transitioned from summer into winter and if you follow my videos you'd know we're well through that transition now and most of the patches planted to grow into that cooler growing season. We live in a subtropical climate so it's a fairly warm climate. We can grow things all year round which is great but we can't grow the same things all year round so we just got to be careful what to plant and when because timing is one of those critical things that if you don't get right you can sort of run into trouble or run out of time or grow at the wrong time and don't get the most out of your crops anyway we'll go logical we'll just start from the front here and we'll go from one bed to the next until we get down to the end in this bed here we've got a pumpkin that's growing pumpkins are usually a spring crop but if we grow pumpkins through spring here the fruit gets hit by the fruit fly and that's the issue I want them so the fruit fly are dormant at this time of year I want the fruit to ripen before spring and before the fruit fly come back then we can pick them and they'll be beautiful yes these plants it gets a bit cold here through winter as well we can get down to even zero degrees Celsius but it's worth risking it and even though pumpkins mightn't grow or mightn't thrive as much, they still grow pretty well, and you risk a frost that could kill the plants just like tomatoes, it's still worth growing up at this time of year because you don't have to then worry about them getting ruined by fruit fly or even indeed as the weather warms up, they still get diseases. Next to the pumpkins, I've got some American purple top suede You've just got some small ones coming up now. Just in here. These two rows. And I've got some black Spanish radish that I haven't grown before and they've come up nicely here as well. Here I've got a whole bunch of rocket that we've just been picking in clumps. I just sowed it in one big clump, crowd growing it. And that way we can just pick it in clumps and eat it on burgers and in salads. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. And here is a rogue tomato that came up on its own and I'll leave it go. We've got leeks in this next bed. Remember this used to be the okra bed. I just done that video on how to grow a ton of okra. And when I pulled the ball the plants out, obviously some seeds fell and we've got okra coming up through winter. They're no good. They're not gonna survive. It's too cold for them. That's why they're looking sick. I've just been pulling them out and we're growing spinach, baby spinach and leeks. You got some mustard here. This is Japanese big red leafed mustard. That'll get into quite a large plant. Amaranth, that's just self seed, leaving it go. Some fennel, that's the standard fennel. This is the bronze leaf fennel it's another beautiful type both very similar in taste on this side here of the fennel we've got some flat leaf parsley that's growing like a champion it grew all through summer but it but it now starts to flourish as we hit the cooler weather oh it's just fantastic self-seeded tomato 
You can see how huge it is. This is a rootstock tomato. It has the very small tomato berries and I let them come up every year. Always good as a backup crop because they're extremely hardy and when, any, when other tomatoes might fail, they won't. Here I've got some cucumbers. Even though the weather's a little cold for them, I plant them before the cool hits. There we go. You might pick a few of them and pickle them and eat them in salads. A little mini trellis for them to climb over. And on the other side, we've got bok choy or pak choy. I'm not sure what they are because we had the seeds and they weren't labelled correctly. They were just labelled as cabbage. So these might be uh, a, a loose leaf or they might be like a wombok. I think they're just a loose leaf, but we'll see how they turn out. You can see we've got a whole lot of them growing there. Here, oh yeah, here we go. We've got another one of these. That's self-seeded again. I didn't put it there. Look at those beautiful tomatoes. Coming up next to these winged beans or winged peas. I'm letting them go to seed. It's the end of the season for them now. They're dying back, getting too cold. Let these go to seed and I'll grow them again in spring through summer. Really good tasting. And on this side I've planted some broccoli. Remember in this bed here I had all that rosella here. I've collected as much seed as I need from this rosella plant and I've replaced it with the broccoli and also I've sowed some squash in here so you'll have some big squash coming up soon and along here is some celerac. You can eat the bulbs and also the leaves of the celerac. Different to growing celery. It's very similar but a little different because you can shave that nice big bulb and, and have it in soups and cooking, especially through winter. Coming into the centre here, these are our old original beds. These wooden ones, the wooden sleepers. And you can see they're very dilapidated and I'll show you even more around the other side. I'm going to change them to raised beds like these once I can get around to it. But you know, one bit at a time, I've only just did this this last season, but still we'll get enough out of them. I mean, they might be dilapidated, but they're still growing good food in it. Got some eggplant here. Starting to flower, it looks pretty healthy, even though the weather's fairly cool. Turmeric, but yeah, they need a fair bit of work. Most of this and the, the kale, is from last season, except this tomato plant's a self seeder. I think it's a tigerella. So I left it come up as usual. I like to keep our tomato plants if I can, especially if they self seed because they're fairly happy. Under here, I've started growing this for the first time a yam bean, and you can see the tubers that this yam bean has created, and I'll probably grow this more now. Here they are, poking out, and there'll be more under the ground. I'll dig them up and we can eat them. They create a bean that's not edible, but you can then replant that, sow it again, and grow more tubers to eat. In this bed here, I've sowed some potatoes. And I'm doing a bit of a potato experiment at the moment. This is a trench style. I'll show you some others in a minute. And they haven't come through yet. But look at this galangal. It's actually out of control. It's, I need to move this galangal. See how it's breaking the garden bed? The beds need changing anyway, but it's just busting out. And this is the thing about galangal. It has grown so successfully, we just don't need all this much. So I'm gonna transplant it out of the vegetable garden so that we can grow proper veggies in here. And I'm gonna put that galangal out somewhere else around the property where we can just dig up the roots for it and not have it take over the vegetable patch. But even in the shade of this galangal, you're still getting parsley, flat leaf parsley growing really well. So there's a good herb for a shady spot. And there's a cardamom leaf. This is another thing that was growing really small down the back of our property. I'd put it down there in a bit of a swampy area just to see how it'd go. And I took a cutting of it, a clump of it, little clump, and I brought it up here to the vegetable garden and it just took off. Really nice for flavoring rice. It smells 
Oh, it smells so Asian. Oh, it's beautiful. And it's lovely to crush up, uh, serve with rice or wrap fish in it and cook the fish and that flavor permeates through it. But again, it's too big for the veggie garden. So I might put it in its own raised round bed or stick it around the property in its sort of own, like, and let it grow like a clump in a, in a bush somewhere, uh, just like an ornamental plant, but an edible ornamental. So it doesn't take up all this room and shade out other crops. On this side of the cardamom, we've got yakon. It's got these lovely orange flowers and the tubers are really nice and crispy. And underneath is bok or pak choy, that's self-seeded. Here's an artichoke, it's in the same spot that we had last season. It just regenerated and grew back again, except it's got several pups. Through this winter, it'll grow into quite a large plant and then it will die back again. I've kept some of the seeds and I've sowed them and transplanted them over the other side of the garden over there. And around this side, I need to do quite a bit of weeding, but this is the old Egyptian spinach that's gone to seed. Again, this is just something that is a great salad crop through the hot times, through the warm months here when other salad crops can't be grown like lettuce or spinach. And I just sprinkle the seeds back in the garden and I know that'll come up in summer when the weather warms up again. And behind it here, we've got some habanero chilies. You can see I crush a lot of things in or squash them all in around the patch. I love growing close together and trying to use every little piece I can of growing space and pack everything I can grow in for variety. And I just think that it grows best when you pack them all in. It's more natural and I think the plants help each other out and it helps to block out weeds when it's chocker blocker. Coming to our first sort of round cylinder bed, this is garlic. Garlic isn't the easiest thing to grow in the subtropics, but I'm giving it a nice crack. And on the other side, we've got a larger type of garlic, that's elephant garlic. Oregano, mint coming back, it was dead all summer. You wouldn't expect that there was anything in this bed, but now within a matter of weeks, it's starting to take over the whole bed again and it'll grow right through into spring and then through the middle of summer, it'll die back to almost nothing again. Here we've got some collards. I think we've got a how to grow a ton of collards video coming up soon. This has been a huge success, these collards in this raised bed. And I just love growing them close together. It's like a loose leaf lettuce, except it's a cabbage. And we've just been eating the heck out of it. And in this little raised mini raised bed here, we've got some Thai basil. This is a fantastic basil plant because it's long lived, gives food for the bees through winter where a lot of other plants aren't flowering. This one is, but it flowers and it also has great leaves. Yeah, the leaves aren't as plump as regular, say, Italian basil, but they still are very flavorful and good for all sorts of cooking, whether it be Mediterranean cooking or in Asian cooking. In here, remember that how to grow a ton of onions video I did? Well, that's this bed. And I've taken the Egyptian walking onion that was in the middle. I've broken it up and I've split it around the sides because it was time to divide it up. And I've put some shallots here around the middle, one, two, three, about six of them. And they'll clump up and grow a bunch of shallots in there. Shallots, a bunch of shallots in there. And the Egyptian walking onion, they'll, they should multiply and grow out and hang over the sides, hopefully and that should be cool. Here I'm growing some potatoes. I planted them the other day and I'll just be chopping that bed up as the potatoes start to come through, but they haven't come through just yet, or I don't think so. No, nothing. This bed here, I'm, I've got some lettuce sowed in here and underneath I underplanted the Jerusalem artichoke from the how to grow a ton of Jerusalem artichoke. I was going to plant them in another bed this season, but I thought, you know what, I'll give them another season in here. I topped the bed up 
and uh, gave it a little bit of extra fertilizer and we'll have the salads come through and then once the salad crop is finished we'll see the Jerusalem artichoke take through just like I explained in the Jerusalem artichoke video. Here we've got the remnants of our chili patch in this raised bed and I'm just planting a few lettuce because these chilies they will overwinter they won't grow very well but we'll still be able to harvest chilies they'll grow slowly different some different varieties of chilies in this bed just the the, the standard cayenne and uh, there's, there's a few others like this spaghetti one and another one here that i can't remember the name of what's it called the corolla stella which is sort of like a, a funny bullet type chili, fairly warm I think it is, fairly hot. And I've even got a bit of chia here that I've transplanted from the, from the potato bed. That I had a few that self-seeded and I um, transplanted them in here because while the chilies are running a bit dormant, I can then underplant with some salad crops and other things. And I've sowed some salad seed in there as well. This bed here is my tomato and pea trellis. The peas haven't come through just yet. Hopefully they will come through. I was using some old seeds, so maybe they won't germinate. If they don't germinate, I'll transplant some more. But this box trellis that I made, the tomatoes will grow up, the peas will also grow up on the inside. And along the middle here, I've sowed some cauliflower. You can't really see them very well. Tomatoes will grow up and over. Same with the peas on the inside. That's how that's gonna work. Here's the end of our turmeric. See it's all dying back. Once it all finishes and dies back, we'll use this as mulch in the garden and underneath we'll dig it up and plant it. Replant it either in here and use as much as we want and replant some more for next season, make turmeric powder and all that. Or we can transplant it to somewhere else in the garden because I think we've had it in here for a few seasons. And along here we've got a pumpkin vine that I've left go do what it wants. It was only one pumpkin plant I think that I put there and you can see how out of control it's gone. Here's a nice sized pumpkin starting to grow. There's a Queensland blue and we've got more and more pumpkin coming through. We've got four tomato plants here. They're Scorpio tomatoes, fairly good disease resistance but I'm not growing them just because they were overflow from our other tomatoes, because they were, but I'm growing them for an experiment. I'm not gonna to elaborate too much on it because it'll be a nice surprise for you guys, but those four are in a really interesting experiment that I'm, that I'm growing, a tomato experiment. And there are other experiments going here as well. You might remember that I did my, what happens when you bury kitchen scraps in the garden. That was this area here. And along that trench I've planted a tomato plant, a coriander herb, and several artichoke, globe artichoke plants that I grew from seed along here and another one. They're growing in that trench. From memory I planted that into some eggshells and uh, so I'm interested to see how it goes without fertilizer, no fertilizer in there and we'll see how it grows in that trench. And then there's some other experiments that I'm running with these other tomatoes that I've transplanted in. And then we'll move on to the old gourd tunnel. And the gourds surprising me. I thought they'd be knocked off by the time winter got here. I thought they'd be gone, but no, they're still producing. Uh, we're not eating the bitter gourds much because the family doesn't like them. I probably won't grow them again. But anyway, we've turned that other half, as you probably know, into the tomato trellis. We've got the determinants on the side here. They'll only grow a little bit bigger than that. Pulling them away on an angle so that it leaves space for the center crop of beetroot that we're growing all the way along here. And on the other side is indeterminate tomatoes that I'm going to grow up and over. Hopefully they, the beetroot will still get enough sun because as I'm growing these up, I'm also pruning the bases of these long, big tomato plants. Fingers crossed, we'll get a whole big harvest of tomatoes and also a successful crop of beetroot as well but yeah yeah these gourds have surprised me although we're not eating them like i said we're eating the loofers um, and also the passion fruits that are growing which is a whole heap 
we're saving some of the leafers, the, the older leafers. We're saving them to uh, use as sponges. Heaps of them. A ton of passion fruits. We've had the odd possum get in here and start eating them, as you can see there. But we've been doing an okay job getting ahead of them. The kookaburras have arced up, but I'll keep pushing through. They're laughing at me. <laughs> now let's see if we can have a look at them. They're up that tree. You won't be able to see them. Oh, there's one that's flown in. There's a whole bunch of them. There's another one. There's a magpie. Probably trying to scare them off. <laughs> ah, they're a beautiful bird, the kookaburras. They keep the snakes down. They eat the small snakes. But you can't see them through here, of course. And they also tell me when there's a predator around, like a large goanna around the chicken pen or anything like that. Uh, so I love having kookaburras around and the magpies and just about all the birds, really. But anyway, back to the garden. So this is the other side of the gourd tunnel. It's probably a better view because you're not looking back into the sun. Tomatoes, gourds, these are the loofers. Once they get about this size, they, they get too stringy. But when they're small, they're like a zucchini. Here's a small one here. You can see all these passion fruits. But here's, a, here's about the size. You don't want them bigger than that. They're perfect, perfect size. Really good to eat. You only need one of them each. And in these little small herb raised garden beds, I've got some basil there. That's a lemon basil. It's getting overtaken just like this verbena is. But oh boy, I love this verbena. Grind it up and then use it as a sort of like a covering for meats like lamb and chicken. Maybe a little bit of chili with it, all ground up, nicely plastered all over whatever piece of meat. The flavour just goes all the way through it and it just creates a beautiful crust too. This is the other side of the passion fruit trellis. So see, that's got its separate own trellis and then it's come up over the gourd tunnel. Pretty cool, hey? And I've just let it take over and fight with the gourd and they're both growing together quite nicely, actually. Now that we're coming into winter, the passion fruit vine is starting to die back and the fruit's starting to ripen and then before spring, it's all been cut back and then it can rejuvenate again and start growing and then produce more fruit and we'll just get another season out of the passion fruit. Probably keep that going for a couple of years. This side here is the end of our asparagus. It's the asparagus that's gone to flower, starting to die off. There's a few weeds in there. The weeds come up because the asparagus gets sparse as we're into winter. The asparagus will put all the energy into the crowns. In another month, I'll cut this all back and it'll be all bare. I'll rejuvenate the soil and then the asparagus will grow up through just like my ton of asparagus video that I made. On this side, I've got a raised garden bed with blueberries and they're going very well. I really am excited about this experiment of growing several blueberry varieties in the one raised round garden bed like this. I think it's going to be easy for, for me to look after and they're going to cross pollinate really easy and they're going to grow more fruit. Well, that's the theory. Uh, they're already starting to flower, being readiness for this coming spring in another several months. Little bell type flowers and on the other side of the blueberries. Well, first of all, I'll talk about the compost bays because you might be wondering, I'm still working on getting these rejuvenated and repaired and redone. The type of layout that I had or the concept was to lay down this matting over the top, let the water permeate through because it's porous, but it didn't work that well. So I'm going to redo these bays into something a bit better, but I'll talk about that another time. But I really do want to get these going because compost is a big thing for us and I'm sick of buying bagged compost and I want to make a whole lot in bulk. That's okay, but it doesn't make much. Those tumblers and a, and a standard little pile doesn't make much. I need my base system working again so I can get heaps of compost because we're always running out. Right in front of us here is another potato bed and this is a new raised garden bed that I've put together. Hopefully 
I can bring you a how to grow a ton of potatoes video and show you my tricks and tips on it. And back again to the other side of this asparagus, we've got the ginger and all the ginger now that we're hit coming into winter is all dying back. These are the ginger plants. If I dig down, you'd find ginger. And these eventually will all die off. I'll let this die back, dig it all up, rejuvenate the bed, especially when the asparagus has gone to, I'll probably do them both at the same time. And then in spring, or probably by the end of spring, the ginger will start coming up. By about mid spring, the asparagus will be regrowing. This bed here is the old how to grow it. Remember my how to, I'm, tell, I'm telling you all these how to grow a ton of, because just in case you haven't seen them, but my how to grow a ton of sweet potato. And see this all cascading over here. If you watch that video, you'll see the end of that video. I was replanting it back in and how I did that. Uh, now you can see, if you do go back and watch that video, you'll realize how well it grew and took off. If, you, if anyone was a skeptic of the way that I just threw all that vine back in and mulched it over, well then you can see that it does work. And the last, well second last garden bed, again more bok choy or pak choy or whatever you want to call it. So many people call it different names now. And also chilies. These are these ricotto chilies I'm growing for the first time because they're supposed to grow through our winters. Well, let's hope they continue to do so. They look, look okay, they look a bit pale leafed. I might give them a bit of fertilizer. More seedlings coming up here of these Asian, whatever it is that I sprinkled in there. It's either a wombok or a bok choy or a pak choy. We'll see as they get a bit older what they are. And we've got other chilies here as well. This is a big red I grew from seed. And these are still cayennes. They look very healthy. And finally, here's that kangkong. You would have seen some of that in some of my other videos. I'm just letting this die back and flower and go to seed. And this was in this self-watering bed here. Little experiment self-watering bed that I got from Birdies that I was just testing out. And that's pretty well about it, except I did forget the two small herb beds here. Remember my how to grow a ton of basil? That was the one that's closest to the gourd tunnel bed. And you can see the basil is actually still growing strong. And it's poked its head up here. It must be seven foot tall. Even though this gourd and passion fruit is trying to smother it out, you can see how long it's grown up through there, through there, and still finding a way to get light. And that's what I love about, you know, crowd growing or really trying to use every bit of space. You'll find that the plants will find a way most of the time and fight each other and find some light. So don't be scared to use every little bit of space you can and crowd things in a little closer than maybe what the book says because you'll be surprised at how well it could grow. And the other bed, bed here, I've got some red back ginger. This is a native ginger to Australia. Grows a berry that's a nice edible berry and the roots edible as well. And uh, so I've just been growing this in this small raised garden bed, keeping it contained, seeing how it goes. It's growing, looks like it's loving that spot. It seems to be very healthy. And uh, we'll see how that goes. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this tour of our vegetable garden. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up because that's important and share the video around. Because when you do that, I'll then understand that you like this type of video format and I'll do more of it. Perhaps what we could do is at different times of the year, different seasons, like this is more of the cross between summer into winter, that type of thing. And it coincides nicely, like I said at the beginning, with Europe and some places in America, the colder climates. So it's probably fitting that I do them at those times. But anyway, we'll just see how it goes. So remember, thumbs up if you do like it. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.